Hey, Bucket Pond family, welcome back. Today we have episode four of my planted nano aquarium bladder snail breeding experiment. Yes, I am breeding bladder snails specifically for body color. In a previous episode, we looked at various clutches of eggs spread through the aquarium. And today we are looking at hatchlings. Yes, these eggs have developed and they have hatched. These are baby bladder snails and they are exploring their new world. Uh, this makes me really happy. I haven't shared hatchlings with you much on the channel and I think it's great to see them. Right now they're tiny and we're not going to see any identifying traits or characteristics. Um, they're clear. They are clear. So there's no uh, color identification just yet. I'm willing to bet uh, my hypothesis is that many of these offspring will be gray or white. And we might have a few oddballs here and there. These bladder snails are descended from some very interesting individuals that we've discovered in our projects lately. So I'm excited to see what the future may hold for these young bladder snails. We have many, many more eggs spread throughout the aquarium. Uh, they're on the airstone, they're on uh, everything. And that's great. We have been overfeeding the aquarium very carefully. And that has triggered the abundance behavior in bladder snails where they will just breed and lay eggs on everything all day. I've triggered this behavior by carefully overfeeding the project. Uh, we fed them with a number of different things already, even though the tank has only been running for about 15 or 16 days. Uh, that piece of squash that I added in the previous video, it is breaking down slightly. It, it looks like there's a ton of squash in here. That's that yellow stuff right there. And I do have it pinned in the bottom of the aquarium with a hook. I'll explain more about that later in the video. And this might seem like a large amount of food for such a small aquarium, but it's not just a few bladder snails in here. We also have a ton of microfauna, a literal army of tiny organisms which are assisting the bladder snails in breaking down this food source. So uh, as this squash tries to decay and slowly rot in the aquarium, it is being broken down and consumed immediately by the pets inside. It's a careful balancing act that you have to maintain in order to prevent the water from becoming septic or toxic while still encouraging your snails to breed like rabbits. <laughs> now, if I had assembled this aquarium with no food and just let it run as it was, our few adult bladder snails would survive. They would be fine. They can scavenge uh, biofilm, bacteria, and algae very easily. And they would survive, but they would not be breeding like they are right now. And uh, I've mentioned that these guys really enjoy the floating, flying, uh, diving behavior that you see occasionally in bladder snails. This particular bloodline in this particular tank, they seem very much inclined to perform that behavior often. Now, it could be mostly based on the setup of this tank, or it could be just something these snails are more inclined to do. They are performing the behavior more than my other bladder snails, so it is worth mentioning, I believe. It's also very fun to watch as they just slowly float around the aquarium. And to me, it doesn't make much sense as this is a small tank. This is 64 ounces, I think. Um, they don't need to uh, perform this rapid travel activity. They can easily crawl to the bottom or to the top in moments. So, yeah, it's an interesting behavior. You'll see here that large stem sticking out of that plant pot reaching off to the left. That is the Wedelia that I've mentioned previously. We have about two inches of growth on that Wedelia stem. And it's only been in here like a week or so, so that's a, a pretty good sign. And uh, our bladder snails are thriving, you guys. This one seems to be a bit long and stretched out. I've mentioned that on a few of my videos as well. Um, their body can change a bit as they move, but generally this is the shape you should expect, and maybe even a bit shorter on the tail end of the foot. So that whole part, the bottom part of the snail, is called the foot, and that's what they use to crawl or walk or whatever. 
<laughs> That's how they move through the tank. And these guys love squash. Yeah, <laughs> that makes me really happy. Uh, so far, I've tried a number of different food sources in, you know, various aquariums, but I've learned that slow-release food sources like um, hard, dense vegetables and things like this raw squash are a good option because they slowly break down in the tank. As it tries to decay a little bit, our pets rush in and they consume. And it, it works out really well. Now, I mentioned this previously in uh, previous episodes on this aquarium, but I have planted the background of this tank heavily, and I put no plants in the foreground. I wanted to have a nice, clear, open front area for the tank with a nice planted wall on the backside, allowing places for the microfauna and the snails to hide, while also, you know, giving us a nice clear water area in the front. Now, don't be too uh, disappointed, but we're not going to see the hatchlings much as they are going to dive. They're going to hide. Tiny hatchling bladder snails, they have a strategy for survival that involves hiding in the substrate. They'll go down into those rocks and into the plants, and you will not see them again until they are old enough to reproduce. At which point they will crawl up out of the substrate, they'll come out of hiding, and they'll begin breeding, and we'll see them again. So the Wedelia stem is looking great. That's that root that I mentioned uh, a moment ago. It looks very Christmassy coming out of the tank, and I added that root, or I added that plant for a specific reason. And that's because the spike rush can be uh, in shock. When I first added it to the tank, it was not ready to carry a large bio load. It wasn't ready to filter such a significant amount of material from an aquarium on its own. So I added the Wedelia to help uh, balance the tank to uh, assist the spike rush in carrying the, uh, the aquarium for a while. Eventually, I will remove the Wedelia, and we'll have just the underwater plant here. So this is about 18 days after setup, and you can see the benefits of having that open water area in the foreground. The microfauna seem very, very much uh, at home, and they seem to be very content as they enjoy that open water area. And they also have that nice planted area in the background for hiding and reproduction and... Uh, I think it works out really well. This feels very natural to me. I think I've almost captured the vibe of that hidden stream that we visited not too long ago. So eventually I will look at adding a second light to this tank as the spike rush is growing very nicely, but it may begin to struggle in a very low light condition. And in fact, here's a piece of spike rush, which is pinned down in the corner of the aquarium. And you can get a good structure, a good look at the structure of the plant. It is very much a node that can grow stems and roots in every direction. And every stem can then grow another node. And that node can grow roots and stems in every direction. And eventually you end up with a, a mat, a, a bog mat, if you will. And I think it's really cool. It can be somewhat difficult to work with. I will have to trim the spike rush soon, which is hilarious to me as we just built this tank. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. The Wedelia and the spike rush both came from the same pond uh, many years ago where I found uh, a wild bog mat floating on top of some water. I took some samples and that's where we got it from. So I'm going to open the tank up and I'm going to take our feeding hook out of here. I'm going to feed the tank with a chunk of cucumber. Um, using a hook or a spike like this is not really necessary, but it does help to pin the food items down to the bottom of the tank. Uh, it allows your uh, snails and your microfauna easier access to the food item if it's submerged and it will rot in a different way than if it was floating up at the surface and exposed to the air. I know that kind of sounds weird, but yeah, you don't want rotting fruit floating around in your house. <laughs> uh, if you pin it to the bottom of the tank, then your pets will consume as much as they, as much as they can, excuse me. 
and you can always just pull the hook out of there if you have to. Um, yeah, it works out well. It's a lot easier than trying to fish out a chunk of food floating around in your tank that you want to remove. Now, I have been carefully overfeeding this aquarium, but if I get to the point where I think that I'm oversaturating the ecosystem with uh, too much food, too much material, then I will remove the excess and allow things to settle a bit. But right now we have hundreds of bladder snails on the way. Uh, some of them are hatching right now, and so I need to be ready for that. They need a lot of food. And I should have mentioned that they did consume all of that squash, so that was gone. Day 18, it was almost completely removed. So that's great, and I'm excited to see how fast they will eat this piece of cucumber. Ultimately, you guys, this tank is amazing. I think I've done great work here. The tank looks amazing, and as things are right now, I would not change a thing. We've built the perfect culture for bladder snails. We have hundreds of baby snails on the way, and I can't wait for them to grow up and start crawling around the aquarium. I've done a number of episodes on this tank, but we'll wait for another update until something interesting happens. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So for now, I'm going to leave you with a parting shot of my terrestrial isopods as they enjoy a sweet gum seed pod uh, in their large plant pot container. And I'm going to say thank you to everyone watching, everyone who made it this far in the video, to my Patreon supporters, and my YouTube members. And uh, yeah, my name is Bucket Ponds, or just Ponds if you want. Please like, subscribe, drop a comment, and enjoy. And uh, sorry for the delay on this video. I was in a rush and a lot of stuff going on.